the county. I can hear you through the wine and the witches all I love is still on the line. Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen is a bit of an odd one. It is by a Chinese pen maker, Keiko. I've had one other Keiko pen which cracked almost when I breathed on it. This one has an interesting angle, however. It looks like it's a refugee from a tourist trip to London, England. It is the Keiko Acanthus and is based on the textile design of the British artist William Morris. The box even celebrates the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, and the pen is named William Morris. A quick look at the Victoria and Albert Museum gift shop yields a plethora of William Morris gifties museum guests may purchase, from seaweed oven mitts to acanthus leaves playing cards and aprons and umbrellas. This isn't to knock William Morris or the Victoria and Albert Museum. I have a beautiful set of Vincent van Gogh teacups that I love dearly and purchased at the National Museum of Canada in Ottawa. But in looking at this pen, I suspect I've been ripped off. Let's find out why right now. <laughs> So even though my tracking says I'm not getting anything today, I received something out of the blue and I have a number of things outstanding and I think I know what this one is, so we're going to open it up and see. It makes the three and four month wait for your pens that much more interesting when you haven't got a freaking clue what is coming to you in the mail. It's a bundle of bubble pack. Yeah, we don't want to this. Go ahead and talk amongst yourself while I open this. I'll give you a topic. How about that mail, eh? Talk amongst yourselves! There we go. I was interested in this pen when I saw it. I, it isn't something that I, I really thought I would like, but it had such an interesting design to it. But I thought, well, let's give it a try and make an interesting video anyway. And it wasn't that expensive. This is a Keiko and it's Acanthus. And this is the Acanthus leaf. And so I thought, well, it's a nice theme there. I can't read that, but this is a Red Dot Award of 2018 winner. Isn't that fascinating? I have no idea what a Red Dot Award is. But uh, this is based on the William Morris painting, Acanthus Wallpaper. 
So a distinctly Western themed pen from a Chinese manufacturer. And I was expecting a plastic pen and that's exactly what I got. This is a very plastic pen. Ooh, it's a plastic, plastic pen. Pop top, semi-transparent section. Interesting. Posts, yeah, not too bad. Very interesting. Converter, standard international, uh, number five size EF nib. Anyway, I will clean this out and we will do a review on this Keiko Acanthus. When I unboxed this pen, somehow in my mind, I thought I paid eight or $10 US for it. Listening back just now to my unboxing video, I hear myself saying it was inexpensive, so why not give it a try? Well, I checked and I paid $17.80 US for this pen, uh, which translates into $23.80 Canadian and it is more than twice what this pen is worth don't get me wrong it isn't a horrible pen as we shall see it is a cheap plastic pen that should be cheap and it isn't cheap it writes and if it cost about eight bucks us i'd be smiling but let's not get ahead of ourselves he said quietly to himself Hotten up the ball a monkey's bum. That's a strange expression, Bruce. Well, Bruce, I heard the Prime Minister use it. Sod enough to boil a monkey's bum in here, Your Majesty, he said, and she smiled quietly to herself. She's a good sheila, Bruce, and not a tall stuck up. What I want to do is go over the parts and features of this pen, do some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. And after the writing sample, I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. First, a note about William Morris. Those of you pen adventurers uninterested in learning anything about art or history can skip ahead. For the rest of you, are the others gone yet? Are they gone? Okay. For the rest of you, you're all my favorites anyway. Who needs those wankers? You damn people, front <laughs> wankers. Okay, William Morris was a poet an artist, an illustrator, and a textile designer who was part of Victorian England's arts and crafts movement. The acanthus wallpaper upon which this pen's finish is based, and the pen is named, is an example of Morris's intricate pattern designs he used for textiles, book illustrations, and even book inside cover designs. The acanthus leaves wallpaper on which this pen is based also reminded me of some scary wallpaper from one of the best horror films ever made, The Haunting from 1960, directed by Robert Wise. Some of the most frightening scenes are listening to murmuring voices in the night while looking at the moonlight on the acanthus wallpaper of the bedroom as it begins to form grotesque faces in your imagination. Other than that, the design is very pleasant. This pen has William Morris's name stenciled on it, along with the V and A logo from the Victoria and Albert Museum of London, England. The box also has a canvas wallpaper design, the V a logo from the museum in addition to the only location of the pen's name keiko 
and its logo. The company's logo is here on the top and listed with its address here on the bottom. Keiko's logo is also on the nib of the pen, as we shall see. And VA can be found in five locations, four on the box and one on the pen. I get the feeling that these were made for the Victoria and Albert Museum gift shop in 2018. I'm guessing they were surplus supply that were bought up by eBay shops cheaply and marked up heavily. The 2018, there's a 2018 there, and there's a Red Dot Award 2018 there, and more Victorian Albert logos. The pen is injection molded plastic of the very inexpensive and very soft variety. The pen is very light. The top of the cap has a round depression in it with an injection molding gate in the center. Uh, the clip is the same soft plastic and extends as a separate piece from the cap. The clip is comically flimsy, not even close to al dente, more like mushy spaghetti, but it's got seriously sharp edges enough to give you a nasty paper cut. There is a cap liner inside the cap. So my guess is all of these parts snap together. In fact, when I move this, I'm just discovering that now. As I move this piece here, this top piece moves. Okay, so that now, where that seam is right there, these two pieces move. Maybe you can hear that interesting so all those parts snap together the cap as i said before has the victorian albert museum logo right there the v and a and william morris in a gold stencil i wouldn't rub this too hard at the end of the cap there is a very sharp edge that can also give you a nasty cut very, very sharp right there. The cap is straight right to there. Then the barrel tapers very, very slightly towards the end finial, which has a raised dot in the center and the letter F. I have no idea what the F stands for since this pen is an extra fine. So uh, since I'm an avowed smartass, I will suggest that it is the pen's grades. The barrel is overlaid with a silk screened, low resolution, half tone print of William Morris's acanthus wallpaper. I would guess that William Morris would not be pleased with this seam right here. If I get really close where you can see how low resolution that is. And that is a half tone print, which is and a half tone, if you don't know, is what the kind of print resolution you use in a newspaper. The cap snaps off to reveal a translucent green matte plastic section that is surprisingly, I had no idea it was triangular. And we see a number five steel nib. There's the Keiko logo. EF for extra fine. And, and I have to keep myself from chortling here, Germany. This must be some suburb of Shanghai that we've never known about before. It looks like the nib and feed might unscrew or pull out, but I was unsuccessful short of destroying a work of art or injuring myself with paper cuts. Ow! Oh! Paper cut! Paper cut! The barrel unscrews. And we see an unremarkable standard international ink converter, cartridge converter. The cap posts deeply and securely. And since the cap weighs not, it doesn't back weight the pen or make it overly long to write with. Now, the pen in the hand. This is weird. Well, at least it gets you out in the open air. No, yes. I just like triangular sections anyway but this one is very soft edged and it would be fine, except it lines you up with the nib in the wrong direction. I fought with it for a few minutes, trying to 
right with it with the nib oriented this way but the points were right there and it kept rotating to the wrong direction I finally had to twist with a piece of rubber I twisted that nib around so that the triangular parts were on the side and it lined up the nib so that it lined up properly so you could write with it if I couldn't have twisted that nib around this pen would be trash at this point I'm a bit underwhelmed by this Victorian beauty but let's press on shall we and let's look at some size comparisons with this okay here we are with the Keiko Acanthus and this is a Lamy Safari a Pilot Metropolitan a Faber-Castell Loom and a Keiko Crapo let's look at them posted and here are the pens posted the Safari has a triangular grip as well but at least it points you in the right direction the Keiko Crapo down here is actually called the Edge but perhaps a better name for the Keiko is Keiko Cracko since that's what it's good at uh, all of these pens post deeply and securely and they all have roughly number five size steel nibs and uh, the other thing they have in common is I just like almost all of them yes all of them I would say that the Pilot Metropolitan I don't dislike as much as the rest of these pens uh, but I don't write with any of them now let's look at some measurements for the Keiko Acanthus and I'll be back with a writing sample <music> And we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Keiko William Morris Acanthus and it has an extra fine steel nib and the ink today is Robert Oster Astrakiza olive here is the swatch for the Robert Oster Astrakiza olive and here it is with a Robert Oster green at night and a Roshizuku Chikurin say that five times fast Chikurin 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 let's check the wetness if I can get this thing lined up properly there we go it's actually decently wet for an extra fine and it writes first time out of the box which was also very nice and as to line variation there's no pressure very thin lines a little bit of pressure a little bit thicker but it's a very stiff nib and you can push a little line variation out of it but it's not something I would do you're tearing up the paper and for our writing sample see what I did there and some reverse writing yeah it won't let me hold the pen properly in reverse very thin 
Whoa. And as you can see, it digs into the paper. So I wouldn't do that either. And some quick writing. It keeps up fairly easily. Extra fine, doesn't need to have a lot of ink anyway. The pen isn't really scratchy, but there's a lot of toothiness. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry? To it, as you would expect from an EF. So, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? Well, what's to like? Not much, really. It writes. Okay. That's the highest praise I can give it, actually. It wrote right out of the box. Well, to be honest, my Leonardo didn't do that. Oh, snap! But let's be realistic. This is a dirt cheap pen that was made to be sold from a bucket in a museum's gift shop next to Karl Marx, bobblehead dolls, and little troll erasers with pink hair and pencils stuck up their hoo has. <gasps> I actually expected more from this because I paid $23.80 Canadian for it. Yes, I know that's the third time I've said that. Well, well of I... all the cheap, lousy ways to save a buck. That's pretty low, mister. If I had a rubber hose, I would be... I can get a pen BBS 308 for that money. Less, actually. A real pen. This is the P.T. Barnum eBay pen. This way to see the egress. And you find yourself outside, poor... But wiser. I thought about giving this away as part of a YouTube giveaway, but thought I couldn't be that mean to my viewers. I'll give it as a secret Santa gift next Christmas. That's what I'll do. That's the spirit. Oh, thank you. It's very kind of you. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.